Let's make one thing clear. Molan Automotive is not going to see a short squeeze. The company is ultimately destined for delisting and bankruptcy. Like many of the other companies, the CEO of Molan, David Mitry, has been involved with previously. In this video, I'm going to highlight the primary reason why this company is doomed. Molan can get the press to come inside their facility. They can roll out videos of quote-unquote production. But this company is not producing anything. It's just assembling. Assembling most, if not all, the parts for these EVs that just came from Chinese manufacturers. There's essentially nothing American about Mullen's vehicles, even though Mitri will try to claim that they are. That's why they're always bragging about how they didn't spend billions to reach production like their competitors did. It's because they're not actually producing anything. For the sake of the argument, though, let's say they were. Let's say they achieved production at both their manufacturing plants. So we're going to the moon then, right? Well, even if this were true, it would take them years to get to profitability, like it has for every other EV company. Their expenses are going to rise as they actually start assembling things, and Mullen's already losing $50 million or more a quarter. They lost around $54 million in Q2. With $200 million in cash, they'd be lucky to have a couple quarters before they have to dilute even more. But that's the thing, though. They're going to dilute you endlessly whether they need to or not. And that's the primary reason why this company is never going to have a short squeeze. Mullen had to perform a 1 for 9 reverse stock split to maintain NASDAQ compliance, which they clearly failed to do, as you can see from their collapsing stock price. I believe the CEO is planning on asking for another extension from the NASDAQ to try to remain compliant. But it's very interesting the company's having such a hard time maintaining a stock price of $1. Yeah, I wonder why that could be. Yeah, uh, anyone paying attention knows exactly why. As of August 14th, their shares outstanding are sitting at 184 million. Compare that to what I was looking at in my previous video on Mullen just a month ago, and they were at 643 million pre 1 to 9 reverse split, and that was in June. So if we account for that reverse split now, multiplying 184 million by 9, we have around 1.65 or 1.7 billion shares outstanding. So in the span of two months, they nearly tripled the shares outstanding again. If you want to account for the dilution from the last two reverse stock splits, we need to multiply that 1.65 billion by 25, since the first reverse split was a 1 for 25. So that gets us to a very manageable 41 billion shares outstanding from where this company started. When Mullen first listed in November 2021, they had a share count of around 23 million shares outstanding. So we've seen approximately 175,000% dilution since this company was listed just two years ago. This is getting beyond absurd. Yet who is still buying this? And I'm sure the share count is even worse than what it looks like here. There's going to be no stopping this freight train. This level of dilution makes any chance of a short squeeze impossible. It simply won't happen. A Mullen shareholder's ownership in the company is constantly losing value due to the share structure of this company. For example, the CEO gets 1-2% to of the float issued to him in new shares every time the company hits a quote-unquote milestone. So anyone selling this stock to you is selling you a fever dream. According to people trying to pump this stock to retail investors, this company is comparable to Tesla. Or it's so undervalued compared to other EV startups like Rivian or Lucid. But you know, sometimes companies are undervalued for a reason. Sometimes they're shorted for genuine reasons. Yeah, I'm not short personally, but if I was inclined to do that and invest like that, I would have been all over Mullen. The stock was designed for failure from the very beginning, with their dealings with some shady characters, to say the least. Yeah, my last video on Mullen, which was a full review of the company, link in the description, I talked about how the company was connected to legitimate criminals, Taryn Pizer and Michael Wax. Both investors in Mullen are criminals themselves or have been involved or unquestionable behavior at best. Well, the companies they own, which invested in Mullen, have a 9.99% ownership limitation. Given that they've had a variety of warrants or preferred shares, this forces the company to continue to dilute itself. Yeah, Mullen lays out these risks themselves, looking in their risk section of their latest 10K, we can see that they're warning about significant dilution 
given their obligated commitments to issue shares. They also mentioned their notes, preferred stock, and warrants incentivize these companies to short the stock. And how certain events with preferred stock can bring increasingly significant dilution yet again. So they're actually laying it out for you in these risk sections of their own filings. But the question is, you know, did people read these filings? I highly doubt it, or you wouldn't be investing in a company like this. So this leads me to ask you, do you think a $25 million stock buyback program is going to do anything for the stock price of this company? The answer is no, not even close. David Mitry can come out and issue a letter to shareholders, you know, highlighting all their fantastic achievements, saying the stock is undervalued and giving all these operational metrics. It doesn't mean anything for shareholders if the float's ballooning. Yet even if they somehow manage to reach profitability, I, I don't see how that's possible, but even if they did, it wouldn't matter. So let's be real. If you've owned this company for any significant amount of time, you know, over six months or so, your money is gone. Consider buying Mullen a learning experience and spend the time to understand what you can gain from this. Although it is painful, focus on the signs you could have seen beforehand so you can avoid buying into another sinking ship like this. But yeah, yeah as I mentioned, there will be a link to my full review of the company in the description if you haven't seen that yet. And check out a deal I have for the first 100 people to sign up to Simply Wall Street using my link, as well as a link to Seeking Alpha, and those will both be in the description as well. Thanks for watching.